Fasting duration uh, ranges from five to 40 days. Uh, sometimes it will uh, average fast maybe between one and three weeks, and sometimes it will take more than one fast to resolve a given condition depending on the uh, individual. Now this is brand new, never shown this uh, before, but we're very excited about this. There's um, a machine called a DEXA scanner, which allows us, to, normally is used to screen for osteoporosis. But with new software, uh, these newer machines can also assess very accurately body composition, and including the amount of fat you have on your body, and in particular, and rather uniquely, how much visceral fat you have. That is the fat that, that's the central core fat that lines the uh, abdominal area and the vessels, et cetera. So this visceral fat um, is impacted, as is subcutaneous fat, uh, by fasting. But what's exciting in fasting, as you can see from this slide, is that um, visceral fat is selectively and preferentially mobilized in fasting. The ratio of, of visceral fat that's mobilized is almost three to one compared to subcutaneous fat. So what that means is, in this particular case, you have a 15-day uh, water fast, and you see this individual loses uh, weight, uh, and they lose fat, and some of that weight loss is water and muscle, and some of that is fat. And then as they come off the fast, they regain muscle and water, but they continue to lose fat. So by uh, the end of fasting, a significant percentage of their total uh, visceral fat has already been uh, mobilized, and their lean tissue is minimally lost. So what this is suggesting to us is that not only is uh, fat predominantly lost in fasting, but particularly visceral fat. And so given this uh, evidence, what we're doing now is we're uh, going to embark on a large-scale study, which will actually analyze you know, large numbers of people and uh, take a look at this. But what, what we've always known is that water fasting tends to go to the tissues that the body perceives to be uh, a biggest risk. For example, let's say you lose 10% of your total body weight during a fast. You'd expect then maybe you'd lose 10% of your breast tumor. But no, that's not how it works. Sometimes the entire lesion will disappear, even though, you know, not proportional to the percent body fat. The body has the ability to go in there and do some, <coughs> excuse me, rather amazing things. Um, another condition that's primarily impacted by water-only fasting is high blood pressure. High blood pressure and the conditions associated with high blood pressure are actually the leading contributing cause of death and disability in industrialized societies. For example, you know, almost six million people will develop uh, congestive heart failure, uh, maybe 287,000 will die from it, and blood pressure is the major contributing factor for uh, congestive heart failure. 800,000 people or more will have strokes this year. Again, high blood pressure, major contributing cause. The fact is most people will develop high blood pressure during their lifetime. Almost everybody you know will end up with high blood pressure. 40% of people over age 25 and 63% of people over 60 today have high blood pressure. It's the leading justification for prescription medication. It's worth billions of dollars to the medical industry. But the majority of people that have heart attacks and strokes don't have blood pressure high enough to justify medication. In other words, why don't they just give everybody blood pressure? Why don't we put it in the public water supply, for God's sake? I mean, if it's so common. And the reason is the drugs that are used to treat high blood pressure are very dangerous. And the, if, you give ev if you give somebody blood pressure medications that doesn't have a certain level of high blood pressure, a, a higher percentage of those people will die from the medication than from the blood pressure. So you have to have blood pressure high enough in order to justify the risk of the medication. For example, if your blood pressure is 138 over 88, you have five times the risk of a heart attack compared to somebody at 110 over 70. But you're, you're, um, the risk of taking medications would exceed the benefit at that level. So what's also interesting is for every point you drop your systolic blood pressure through diet and lifestyle changes, you reduce your risk of all-cause mortality 1%. And that level may go down as low as 90 over 60, according to some researchers. So 
um, even at 120 over 80, you can further reduce your all-cause mortality by continuing uh, to make diet and lifestyle changes. And actually, most patients do end up uh, much lower than that if they persist with this diet and lifestyle change. But that's how we treat blood pressure. One medication, two medication, up to five medications. And the results are very disappointing. The other thing that's unique about blood pressure is if you go to the doctor, they will tell you, take these drugs, and you'll be on these drugs for how long? For the rest of your life. Now, how does the doctor know that you'll be on the medication for the rest of your life? Because they can guarantee you that you will never recover. You will be sick forever and be on these medications for the rest of your life. And according to a quote that I drew off the CDC website, it said, unfortunately, people with hypertension cannot be cured because there is no underlying cause for the high blood pressure. There is nothing that can be fixed to resolve it. <clears throat> and that's actually true in the sense that there is no pill or potion that's going to cure blood pressure. What's not completely true is that we don't know what causes it. The fact is, if we want to look at the different things that have been shown in uh, meta-analysis, that is, you know, large studies that have been analyzed, we know weight loss uh, helps with blood pressure. For every kilogram of weight you lose, there's a 1.6 point drop on average in systolic blood pressure. We know that vegetarian high-fiber diets, independent of weight loss, are effective at reducing blood pressure, and that not drinking <coughs> alcohol is a major risk factor for high blood pressure. Just not drinking alcohol reduces blood pressure on average 4.8 points. <clears throat> Exercise is an effective strategy for managing high blood pressure. And although drugs are effective at lowering blood pressure, an average of 12 points, um, they come at a cost. The cost includes chronic cough, fatigue, impotence, and premature death. Um, aggressively reducing sodium, in other words, using an SOS-free diet, a salt free diet, a diet that doesn't have added salt, thank you, will reduce blood pressure an average of 16 points. If you just take your whole uh, plant food diet, you're going to get anywhere between 300 and 500 milligrams of sodium, which is enough to meet all your needs for this critical and essential nutrient. Um, if you use any type of processed foods, of course, that number goes up uh, significantly. Uh, but by reducing uh, sodium to half a milligram of sodium per calorie, uh, you can get uh, a really significant drop in blood pressure. Uh, Don, John McDougall did a program where he combined those variables at the St. Helena Hospital and got an average of 17-point drop. And uh, T. Colin Campbell from Cornell University worked with us on a study that we published with an average drop of 37 points. Oh, that's good. Um, and we published that study. That was the first paper that our research group was able to publish, medically supervised water-only fasting in the treatment of hypertension. We took 174 consecutive patients with high blood pressure, and interestingly enough, 174 people achieved low enough pressure to eliminate the need for medication. And for those with stage 3 hypertension, that is, their systolic blood pressure started at an average of 180 milligrams, um, uh, uh, 180 uh, points, they were able to drop their blood pressure an average of 60 points. Now, that's taking their blood pressure, in many cases, on medication, and in all cases, these people were off medication by the time we were finished. So it's 60 points plus whatever effect the medication might have been having. That represents the largest effect that's ever been shown in the scientific literature in treating high blood pressure in humans, doing essentially nothing, which is water-only fasting in a supervised setting. If their blood pressure started off more moderately, say 166, they dropped uh, their blood pressure proportionally. 